a real quick tip is you can adjust the curvature of the B spline by selecting the point, holding the W key down, clicking and dragging. Welcome to learning MoGraph for Fusion. Let's get started. I just kind of want to give a quick overview of the different types of mask in Fusion. Mask in Fusion are very, very powerful. I just kind of want to talk about the most common types of masks and, you know, some of the not so common types of masks. So let's go real quick to the polygon. Now, as I've said before, anytime you click any node you selected, its features, its parameters show up right here in the tools palette. So you can adjust all the different features for that particular node. So the polygon, it has these points, right? These points make up this mask. Now, uh, right now it's set to uh, border. I'm just gonna put it to a solid for now. So these vertices, this is very familiar to you, right? You got points, these points make up a shape, right? You can make the shape whatever you want. I've got the polygon node selected. Here are my controls, right? I can choose to show, turn off the controls. Um, basically the level is the opacity, right? The opacity of that mask. So if I have multiple masks stacked up on each other, I can control the different levels of opacity for each mask. These all give you different options, right? Check them out. Uh, soft edge. I want to give this mask a nice soft edge. So it's a feather in After Effects, it would be the same thing. So you can come in here and really just dial in and go crazy. Border width, it's kind of like expand in After Effects. You know, you're going to have the expansion of the mask. You can go negative values and, uh, and shrink it down. So border width is very much similar. Obviously invert does what it says. It's going to invert the mask. In solid, uh, basically just turns it right into a stroke. So if I'm at zero, there's nothing there. But if I go negative or positive, there you go. I basically have a stroke. Well, we've got the center, right? The center of the mask. So not only can you control the points and move the points around and so forth, but you have this control, universal control of the center and rotation while we're here. You can rotate. So as you can see here, the Z, as I'm rotating this on-screen control, the Z is rotating. Now you also have control of X and Y. Don't really use those too much, but they are there in case you do need them. And you can have control of the size. Now the size, the position, and the Z rotation all are anchored right here on this center parameter. So the center point is basically acting as the anchor point as well. Last but not least, we have the right click here for shape animation. Now, if you notice here, it's green. And that's because it gives you a, a keyframe. You can see there's a keyframe on your, on your mini timeline. And when we park over it, it's green. So what is that doing? Well, that's basically just giving you an automatic keyframe mode, right? So that way, if you were doing some type of uh, shape animation, it's basically ready to go. So if you do not want to have that, you can just right click on it and say remove polygon, polyline, boom, now. Um, when you make an adjustment, it's not keyframed. It's just going to be in that position. So I hope that makes sense. It's just kind of a way of fusion making its automatic keyframing system. And I'll put it back where it's at. So these are the controls for the polyline. The B spline is, uh, is similar. You've got your opacity. You've got a soft edge border width, center, size, rotation, pretty much the same thing. The difference of the B spline is that the points are automatically curved based on how many points there are. A uh, real quick tip is you can adjust the curvature of the B spline by selecting the point, holding the W key down, clicking and dragging. So now I can make this as sharp as I want to. Like this one, make this real loose. Same thing for this one, make this real loose. Or I can adjust all three of these at the same time. See that? And it's gonna obey the curvature of where it's at. Rotation is gonna be based upon wherever this center point is at. So that's the B spline. The ellipse is a little bit different. The ellipse is just a circle, right? So there is no points, there's no vertices. Um, it's a great way of creating circle, mass, especially when you turn off the solid and you start creating different borders. Uh, you can start to create really cool effects and using the duplicate node, there's a lot of cool things that you can do. So it just depends on what you need and what you're using it for. Um, but the way you control it is you've got these little handles that pop up here. I'm gonna bring down the level so we can see we've got these handles that light up and that's how you can control it. So if, if I click on these diagonal pieces, I can scale the circle up and down. 
as you can see, the height and width are moving as well. Or if I just want to adjust the width, I can just grab that or the height and just gra grab that. So lots of different things you can do. So, you know, I can now control the angle. And a cool thing that if you haven't noticed, this is kind of universal to all of Fusion. And the on-screen controls, this is instantly I know, I visually can see that I have an angle adjustment, right? And if you look right in here, you can see that there's a little line. And it's showing me that's how much of an offset I've done from its original position. And even as I'm dragging, it gives you uh, a little representation to show on like a pie graph where I was at and where I'm going to. So th those are just kind of nice little things. If you notice though, it doesn't have that um, that path animation, right? That's because there's no points, there's no vertices. So the only way you can animate it is with your center or your width or height. And same thing for the rectangle, which is the next one. You know, it's basically the same thing, except for it's just a rectangle. The only thing that's different is that you can also, you can control the rate, the corner radius. So now you can kind of make this, make a circle if you wanted to. And the triangle is an interesting one. It's kind of a variation of the three. It does not have a center, as you can tell. There's no center, no rotation. It's got, a, excuse me, it has an opacity. It has a soft edge. It's got a border, right, an expansion. You can turn it off and make it a, an outline. But the only real things you have to move or adjust are the points, the vertices. And that's about it. I don't use the triangle too, too often. Um, these points are interesting, though. You can um, do all this, the normal things of adding modifiers and expressions and stuff to it. So, so those are pretty interesting. Uh, the other types that are more image-based masks are the bitmap, the ranges, the wand, and the mask paint. So the bitmap is a mask that is used uh, quite often. It needs an image. It needs to be fed uh, a video or a still image. For example, let's just bring this up here. Let's just say that we actually have this merge here, but we wanted to make this whole thing a mask. So I can pipe this into the bitmap. Right now, it's, it's seeking to make a mask from the alpha channel. Well, there's no alpha because this merge has a background and text, so there's no alpha at all, right? So I'm going to go to the bitmap, and I'm going to say, you know what? Use luminance. So now it's trying to extract a mat, a mask, based on the luminance values. So this is not very bright, right? It's not very contrasty, so that's the type of mat you're going to get. So you can use these adjustments here to really bring in your mat as best as possible. So now I'm basically making a mat for my type. And I can extract data out of this image to make a mat for my type. So let's just go ahead and add a color corrector. Fix that. Put this bitmap on here. Let's load the color corrector. And let's just change the color. So I've essentially just now changed the color of just the letters. Why? Because I'm using this image, putting it into a bitmap. I've controlled it to where now I'm just isolating the text. And that's what's adjusting the color. If I turn this mask off, as you can see, it's just changed everything green. And you don't want that. You just want it just on those letters. So we're using this bitmap as a way of extracting data, in this case, luminance values for our text. So that's pretty cool. And that's kind of how you, you would use that. Ranges is very similar. As you can see, you've got these ranges here where you can um, select a mask based on the shadows, midtones, highlights. And you can also look at the different types of channels, red, green, blue, alpha. And you can adjust the parameters to really dial in uh, the mask. So it's, it's very similar to a bitmap, but uh, it just gives you a lot more control. Magic wand is what it sounds like. It's got a uh, magic wand. As you can see here, there's a little on-screen control to pull from. So let's go ahead and kill this color corrector, turn off that. We're gonna pipe our image of our text into our wand. And as you can see right away, it's looking to extract the mat, right? So it's, it found this color, it's seeking the RGB space, the channel's RGB, and it's just boom, it's pretty much pulled it right away. So we can adjust the softness of this however we want. We can adjust the range. Now, if we come over here and select on this N, boom, there you go. It's basically, it's the equivalent of a magic wand. So you can also take this selection point right here. You can track it. You can uh, attach it to a tracker. Uh, it would work very, very well. 
We'll connect it. We'll load that up. And let's just really, really, really change this. Oh, look at that beautiful green. We'll take the output of the wand. Again, use it as a mask. Now, boom, we've just changed that N. So the interesting ways uh, of, of using masks and, and using the image that you pipe into it and how you can extract different types of data for masks and mats. Okay, the last one is mask paint. And as you can see, it's basically a um, the paint node, but used as a mask. And we're going to paint. There we go. We got the stroke that we've painted, and we're going to use it now as a mat for the color corrector. There you go. You can see what's, what that has done. That does not look very good, but that's basically the idea. Hopefully you can start to use masks and really get a better understanding of what it is that you can and can do. So until next time, thanks for watching. Hopefully we learned something. So take what you learned and make it better.